Welcome back. Tottenham's unbeaten start to the season continues. Six unbeaten now for Antonio Conte's side after that 2-1 win today over Fulham at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Guys, let's look at back at how exactly they, they got to that position. Um, had to work hard in the first half, finally making the breakthrough five minutes before uh, halftime through Hoiberg. Again, a feature of what we saw throughout the game was some nice link-up play on the floor with Charleston involved as well. Yeah, it was. And it was coming, that goal. You know, Tottenham were building and building and they were applying the pressure, probing. Didn't create too many clear-cut opportunities, but they finally got the break breakthrough and it was well worth it. From a full point of view, they would be a little bit disappointed the way they lose that there. They're a bit scattered, they're scrambling to get back in. It comes back to Heusberg here and he a nice exchange. This is one 1-2 with Heusberg and he just gets out of his feet. We said half-time me and Gary that there's five, six black shirts around there. He shouldn't get two touches. But take nothing away from it. It's a neat and tidy finish. Um, and, uh, and as I said, Tottenham were uh, with full value for it. Let me see you looking at it and thinking, from a defending point of view, poor. But from an attacking point of view, two players able to take good touches in tight areas and manage still to play the one-two, find the space. Lovely touch here by Hallboy to set it, to create the goal, and then it's the finish is there. There was that little period in the second half where we were kind of looking at each other thinking the game had gone a little bit flat, but it was Antonio Conte flat. It mm. was by design rather than by default. They mm. were sat in, shape was good, consolidating. Uh, the Harry Kane goal on 75 minutes, very welcome, just to give the impetus back. Uh, it's, it's the the dodgy 1-0 lead as well. The Spurs yeah. fans could just relax. But I, think, but I think Conte is comfortable at 1-0. The way he sets his teams up, there was periods in that second half where they went to a flat back five almost and they yeah. were soaking up pressure. But everyone was very diligent, doing their jobs. And even though Fulham were... were it's tough to say they're foothold in the game, but they were kind of in the game. But mm. I, I never felt Tottenham were ever stretched or really overplayed. Now, in fairness to them, they worked really well on the break as well. The front three were, 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 were incredibly good. The chemistry was the word I used in, at half time, and, and yeah. it was pretty good for them. And yeah. this is Sessignon here for the for the Harry Kane goal. Lovely little kind of breaks nicely for him there, and we, we wondered whether it was going to be offside. But look, this is what they can do, Tottenham on the break. You know, lovely little ball down the side into Son, and they keep it alive. They keep the pressure, uh, keep applying the pressure. They get a little bit lucky here with the break. Offside. We all thought it was offside, but he was level with the ball, hence the reason why it was given. He was great overall, Harry Kane, wasn't he? He was brilliant, and, and Damien was saying it as it was happening, it's, it's like a magnet. He yeah. just knows where the ball, if it breaks, he knows he's got to tap in, and it, that's a quality play. He really is. He's, he's at the top of his game now, he really is. Yeah, they always say find that little bit of yard of space mm. as a striker. He didn't even have to there. The ball mm. almost arrived to him. Um, no more than he deserved. He was part of a front three that right throughout the game were very effective and was probably the, the difference between the two mm. sides, that quality in the final third, and in particular maybe in the second half up top. Yeah, they've got a nice blend at the top end of the pitch, and we always thought that, that Kane and Son had lovely link-up play, which they obviously do, but when you throw Richardson in the mix and you've got that, that aggression, that powerful direct running, um, and the chemistry yeah, there was, was, was really, really nice, and then obviously the Son-Harry Kane link-up play will always be there, but now you factor in um, Richardson's aggression and directness, and this is a, a key uh, example of it, where he just tracks back, shouldn't Get it, there's no way to get it, wins it back, keeps the attack alive. And look how many bodies Spurs have in the box there with Heuberg and, 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 and that was Dyer there with leaning back together over the pitch. But they're getting bodies forward and they're all pretty good. There's a fluidity about that front three as well. There's no position on that pitch where you feel they look uncomfortable, whether or not either one of the three drops into ten, he looks comfortable. The other guy put playing at the point, he looks comfortable in wide areas, they look comfortable. And if you think about Richarlison in terms of the big money coming in and having to buy his time, straight away he just looks so comfortable in a Spurs yeah. shirt. He's, the supporters are obviously taken to him. And Damien was saying about him hunting back. We know about his technical quality, but when he's hunting back for the ball, it's not as if Conte's roaring on from the sideline to do it. He naturally does it. And you see the quality. Look, always looking to stretch the game. I think, he, I think he's been a brilliant sign, and I think he'll prove to be a... a someone who could make the difference when Spurs are challenging for trophies. So the question then is, does he fit in every week? Is he the kind of player that you put as part of that front three when you consider how good kuliszewski has been? Mm. Six goals and ten assists since arriving in. He's probably been arguably their most creative player so far this season. And Antonio Conte doesn't necessarily like to chop and change every week, even though the fixture list demands that he probably should. Let's put it this way. If he's out with the team, it's going to be for a game. He's going to be straight back in. But Son might have a break. Kane yeah. might have a break. A Kulisevsky had a, a break today. But then there might be days like today against the likes of Fulham. We go with the three up top and you want to play all three of them and you give someone else a rest. Yeah. So, listen, they're... 
Uh, Tremendous uh, problems you, I have. Do you risk that intuitive dynamic that they seem to have then second half today by chopping and changing, mm. or do you just have to? You've no choice. But if you play all three of them against in a Champions League game midweek or in a Premier League game against Arsenal or a big Premier League game, you mean leave yourself light in midfield. It was essentially a three. 4-3 today, he yeah. might not be that brave, so he might want to go to a 3-5-2 a or a variation of that. So these are the options that managers love. They, they crow for this stuff. I don't think four will start. I think it will be three from the four, and they'll just job share it. They, yeah. they, and that's what they need. They need that strength in depth. They'll have a lot of games this season. Try and keep everyone happy. Um, from a Fulham point of view, obviously came into the game on a real high after the game against Brighton at the weekend and their start over the course of the five games in general. A good shift from them? Are they unlucky maybe not to get something from the game through Mitrovic in particular? Well, yeah, listen, Mitrovic was very quiet, but when he got his moment, it's a, it's a fantastic goal. But I think what Silver would be pleased about is that they stayed in the game. Yeah, they can see yeah, that game early. You, you worry that that first yeah. goal suddenly becomes a second goal. It's a mountain climb in the Premier League. So they're competitive at this level, far more than they were mm. last time they were here. And I think he can be reasonably happy with it. Frustrated, of course, he is because managers always think they can win the game. but. Mitrovic, in terms of just that physicality, he's a bully, he bumps people out of the way. I didn't think that he got the type of service no. that, that we saw from Dan James, that type of ball, yeah. on a regular enough. That ball comes in, I really fancied him there. He doesn't seem to pick up the flight well enough. But he's always, always going to give you an outball, those type of things in. If you look at this initially, he comes with his left foot. Romero is poor that he lets him come back on his right side and open up the goal, but having said that, it's a brilliant finish. We called it as soon as it broke mm. to his right foot. We felt he had the ability and the confidence at the moment to bend it into that far corner, and he just got Fulham back into the game. That's so flimsy from Romero, though. Yeah. I mean, that's